Okay, I'm going to plant some spring onions. I got my dibbler to make the holes. I've used the handle of wooden spoons or plastic spoons, trowels, um, whatever. But this little thing here, if you can see, you stick it in the ground. How easy is that? Just make that hole big enough for your bulbs. And I do them random since I picked most of them the other day. This is a good spot for them. When you plant these, usually you can get them at a local farm store. But there's, see that root end? Hold on. See, one end has roots on it. The other end's kind of pointed. Those roots need to go down. Just put them in the hole. Cover them up. Roots. Roots. It just... And I'm going uh, probably an inch and a half deep. M might should go a little deeper, but that's what I'm doing today. Some of their different sizes. We're growing them for the green. So they grow pretty quick. They're an easy beginner vegetable to grow. If you like green onions, um, I use them in cooking. My husband likes to eat them raw. He'll dip them in salt. If I make a cheese ball, it's always got green onions. We'll cover these up. And they're planted. How easy is that? I love this little thing. It will work on your bulbs, tulip bulbs. It'll work on seeds. You can take and paint you markers on it for how deep you want it to be. Like half inch, inch, inch and a half, things like that. And I could come over here and pop some more in, in between all these plants but I'm gonna wait, let these come up, harvest these about halfway through the time for these to come get tall enough to harvest. I'll come out here and I'll plant a certain amount right here. They get really long greens on them and I take about half of that off and chop it up and put it in the freezer and Ziploc bags. And the rest we, we eat fresh. Just wanted to show you what a handy little tool this dibbler is. Okay, I'm gonna try and plant my um, sweet woodruff seedlings that have needed to be planted for a while now. I got my dibbler to use it to plant the holes because where I'm planting it at hasn't really been amended. It's the north side of my house. It's very shaded, rocky. Sweet woodruff does like the shade. So I just wanted to bring you out here and show you how I do it with the dibbler. Okay, this, this right here is the dibbler. It has a really pointed end that gets larger as it goes up. You plant as deep as you stick that in the ground. This is right around my hydrangea, which is great dirt, but you have the leverage to push down and you can make the holes by waller in it like that. I've got several, several of these sweet woodruff seedlings to plant. One thing about it with it being the north side, there's really not a lot of grass over here to have to worry about pulling away from your seedlings. But there's just a few to start with. 
I'm gonna stick out in the ground so I can use it to get up and down a little bit. Let me set my camera up so you can see more of what's going on. All right. I'll just take one of these seedlings and instead instead of leaving it in the planting the whole pot of dirt I'm gonna try and separate most of the seedling away let me turn you yeah I'm gonna try and get him out try to save as much of this soil as I can. See the roots are pretty long and I'll just tuck it into that hole we made. Let me see if I can show you a little bit better. That's the sweet woodruff seed. Here's another. Actually, is this one has two in it. May not be able to save a lot of the soil with this one since there's two. You just that little seed went away. There's a dibble hole. Drop that sweet woodruff right into that hole. It's planted. Here's another one. Just drop it into that hole. Planted. I got several more to do, but that gives you an idea of how to use one of these. You just find you a spot, put it in there, make it have a little space. Right there it is, and you're gonna plant right in that hole. Easy peasy. Y'all have a good and I gotta plant these. Love ya.
it's early. I'm tired. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you how to put together one of those fly catchers that's hanging from our porch. Ours has been out there less than a week and it's already full, so I'm having to replace it today. But if you wanna see how you do it, I'll show you. You get these, you can get them at Walmart. You can get them online at Amazon. They're by Rescue. They're disposable fly traps. You just add water and hang them up. You'll do a little bit of cutting. But let me, let me go ahead and show you. This is the fly trap we use. I'm sure this is probably gonna be backwards. It may not be, but it's by Rescue. The brand name is, is right here. Green and white and clear package, disposable fly trap. At our Walmart, they had these in bins set up in the aisle near the garden center. What you're gonna need, this was $5 and change. It wasn't really expensive and normally I get more than a week out of one. I think the heat um, made the flies a lot worse. So it filled up, filled up in less than a week. Anyway, you'll need one of these. You'll need something to cut with, either scissors or a box cutter. And I just use yarn to hang it. You're gonna cut a pretty good size string because you're gonna make a loop and you're gonna hang it from something. And don't hang it like right next to your door or um, a window that you open a lot because these put off a scent of a dead animal. It's, it's really a strong, bad smell. You do not want that coming into your house, trust me. And anyway, on the top of these, it shows a pair of scissors and it shows lines that you're gonna cut up around. I'm gonna go ahead and start it with my box cutter. But just follow their dots, easy peasy. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's a little cap that has to come through that hole. So, the little cap that you're gonna feed your string through is right there. And it has to come through this hole. And by now, you'll probably be smelling this thing, but you just pull where that, string loop is and you pull that up through there yeah you can smell it pretty good now um there is a fill line across the back this is going to have to be filled with water to that point let's see if we can All right. Before we do that, I want to go ahead and put the string on. I don't want to try and do it with water in it and get that. It would be pretty bad if I got that stuff on me, but just feed your string, yarn, whatever through that hole. And then however long you want it to be, tie it off to where you now have something to hang it from. I'm gonna tie it again because I do not want that thing falling and landing on my porch. Just cut the tails off. Okay. Now, I got something to hang it from. 
doesn't matter what temperature of water, you're just going to fill it to that line. That will really get it going when the water is added in there. All right, we are filled up to where we need to be. It's ready to go ready to be hung outside. You can hang it on a tree limb. You can hang it on a nail. Um, I have plant hooks on my back porch. And that's what I, it's real convenient just to hang it from that. But I wanted to show you how to do them. They're super simple, super easy to do, and they do work. This is the one we hung up about a week or less ago. You can see... It is just chock full of flies in no time. They go through that little hole, those little holes, and they get down in there and they get stuck. And that's what catches them. But it stinks pretty bad. So I'm gonna take this old one as carefully as possible, because I do not want to drop it. And I'm gonna hang my new one. It's ready to go. And I usually take the old one and throw it in the burn barrel. I just threw away that fly trap. I got some broody chickens I wanna check on real quick. And I'll show you um, how you can kinda of tell they're broody because they growl. They, they don't want you messing with them or they'll chirp or they'll peck you. So let's go look. Okay. <laughs> this is a broody. The breed is Salmon Favaroli. I have another one that is currently raising uh, seven Polish Tolbent chicks. But here, hear her make that little growl. See, and she'll peck because she has stolen someone's egg. I don't want her hatching anything. The other Polish is not the best mom. She tries, but a new mama. I, I'm going to let this one have a little more practice first before we do that again. But yeah, see, she's not hurting me. Now, if she was a little bantam, sometimes they'll draw blood. But this chicken right here is, they're a gentle breed. And they're not, no, she's not hurting me. She's got a sister, though, that's wanting to get up here and lay an egg. I'll come out all day long and take away eggs that she's stealing. This one is a Bantam, and she will peck a little harder. She had three eggs under her the other day, but one of them was, I had candled them, and I thought it had a chicken in it, and that's not of it. it was dead. It blew up, and you can still kind of smell it. I changed her bedding, but mm, yuck. She... See. Yeah, see, this one right here is not hers. She's got two under her. That exploding egg the other day could have ruined them. Even, you know, even this one being a bantam, I'm not seeing any pippin. Even this one being a bantam, she could actually have a. Uh, bite me enough to hurt but she's not she's she's pretty gentle but that's that's these two bands now let's go take a walk if i can get up all right let's go take a walk and i'll show you a couple more broodies it seems like something's always wanting to have a baby around here okay guys i'm not trying to scare you We'll walk slow. It doesn't matter with, if you walk slow, sometimes they still get spooked. There's a little nest where the chicken's been laying. And this, there's a silky right there. As far as I know, she doesn't have anything under her. No, she doesn't. She just loves to hatch. We've had honey for a few years now. 
and all she wants to do is hatch out babies. That's all she cares about. She hatches them out. They get good and feathered, and she's done with them and wants to start hatching again. But let's get down here where we can see this. You hear the duck? See? She is not wanting me under here at all. She will peck hard enough to hurt the first time, and then she does that. She just doesn't want me messing with anything. She's got chicken eggs under her. And I worry about that because her mother would hatch out, um, she'd set on any egg, but right before they hatched, when those babies in the eggs start chirping and she figured out it wasn't a duck, she um, she killed them and ate them. So I, I worry that this duck will do it. But with Honey sitting next to her, Honey is liable to steal those babies anyway. Um, so if that happens, it'll be just, it'll be fine. That's that's a pretty duck. Pretty